You are still watching Ways Now. Global Family Day, also known as World Peace Day, is celebrated every year um, on the 1st of January, of course, to promote the concept of harmony and unity in the world. Furthermore, it emphasizes the idea of the world as a global village in which we are all family, regardless of citizenships, borders, or race. I mean, when I saw this um, international holiday, <laughs> I just remember the speeches that... Uh, Black man Putin and uh, what's his name? The Ukraine guy. Um, Zelensky. Zelensky. I, I remember their speeches. Mm. I said, Chai. Wow. The world needs, I mean. Literally, like, is there. I, I don't. Do you know that I really don't believe in war? Yeah. Because I, I believe truly that there's absolutely nothing that, that cannot can't be, be resolved settled and resolved. Absolutely. Without, I mean, like, without. Mm. There's, there's a lot of things that you can settle without having yeah. to go through the route of um, violence or the mm -hmm. route of violence, whatever you call it, right? So when I see these killings here and there, left, right, and center, you bomb me, I bomb you, you do this, I do that, I'm just wondering, like, what exactly is the fight for? Is it a personal ego thing, or what exactly is it about, right? And we talk about World Peace Day, we're talking about Family Day, and you're looking at it and you're seeing that, you know, people cannot just rise above certain kinds of differences mm. and just embrace peace, no matter what it is. You know, it's just mm -hmm. difficult. One can only hope. I mean, we're in the face of two major conflicts that have been, one running for longer, that's the Ukraine, Russia. Um, and Israel, Gaza. And then now we've got Israel and Hamas and, you know, America weighing in and all the effects of that across the world, anti-Semitism, people who are pro-Hamas. Um, pro I mean, it's... When you look at it, none of it makes sense. It's all just scary. And then you come home and, you know, you look at all the killings that have been happening in Plateau. It, sometimes you just wonder, you're like, you know, how do humans get to this point? But I was watching a movie um, last night, actually, um, and it was about uh, Scotland many, many, you know, decades and uh, centuries ago, ago. Mm. where the kings um, had asked the King of England, the Lords of Scotland had asked the King of England uh, after the death of the King without a, an heir to help them pick a king. And in that, in that decision, they realized they made a mistake. The King tried to, in fact, took over Scotland. They fought a war for eight years and, and lost. And eventually, and I just, you know, in watching that movie, I thought to myself, the same things in the 1300s. This is 2024. <laughs> Those same battles, you know. There's nothing really new under new. the sun. Whether yeah. you are fighting for land, whether you are fighting for ego, whether it's driven by greed. Or it's women. All of these <laughs> things, they have always existed. And I kept saying that until the human race decides to do things differently. Um, and I don't know even what is going to trigger that because maybe it's when one day aliens turn up and we all have to band together and we don't care. Hmm. Um, maybe then that will be what will happen. But we keep repeating the same things over and over again. So we're not learning. There's, you know, well, th there have been so many wars where that did, by where, now where everybody should have the sentiment you have, hmm. which is that never again. But here we are. Um, I, was, I just, in fact, I was playing something for background noise and I was watching the, um, the, the debate for the Republican nominees in America, and all of them were unanimous in the crush, crush, kill, destroy. And I'm like, these are people who are vying to be leaders. So I mean, that if, if we all still see that, you know, everything must be met with brute force. I think, I think at, the, anyway. at the base of every war that I have studied, right, it is a function of ego. Uh, ego plays a big part. It's a very big yeah. part. Like, so can you just put aside mm. those, like, literally, who are you trying to impress? You mm. want to show that, oh, my weaponry is a, a, lo a I lot I can more dominate you. Yeah, I, 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 and and I it's dominate, the same thing. I can, like, literally, yeah. it's, just, it's just ego playing yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, And it's so sad. Yeah. It's so sad. Absolutely. All right, so, Uti, what did you find for us in today's news? Well, I'm starting my story on um, one based around security. Um, this has to do, so it's, it's not really for me about the locality um, in which the story is about. So the headline um, says, Lecky Street's gates removal will worsen insecurity. And that was coming from human, human rights lawyer and senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Ebolua Adeborua, um, who has said that the decision of the Lagos State government to remove street gates in Lecky Phase 1 is ill-advised. Now, he said this yesterday. Um, 
And of course, we all know and remember what happened in Lekki Phase 1 during the SARS, um, NSARS protest and how Lekki was overwhelmed with crime and, yes. you know, and a lot of streets had gates put in after because, let's be honest, that's a, quite a porous neighborhood because it was mainly residential, but now it has become quite uh, you know, a, a business district and commercialized. So people are sort of living in the middle of businesses. And, you know, they really did go through a lot in that period. And they've, of course, then taken their own security into their hands and put up, um, and, and put up these gates. Now, I understand that um, this was driven, according to the story, by the visit of the president over the Christmas break um, and where he was, according to the story, wrongfully informed that the cause of the traffic was that there were lots of street gates now put up in Lekki, which was causing gridlock. Um, to which the Lagos State government has now started to remove those gates. So he's appealing to the governor to instead work with the Residents Association to achieve something that is a workable arrangement around it. I mean, why the story stood out for me, it's not really about whether it's lucky or wherever the case may be. The fact is that as citizens, we constantly have to take our own security into our own hands. We build more gates, we build higher walls, you know, we have, we pay for our own private security. So... For me, it's, it's more the symptom, the root cause, rather, that I'm looking at, in that you've clearly not been able to provide the kind of comfort that your citizenry need to know that I am safe without gates. These gates, to be honest, only give us an illusion of safety. So they have taken the matter into their own hands. And rather than having this sort of open dialogue around how do we make this place more secure, we just always have largely reactionary um, approaches. And that is it. Take it, it down, me, take it when down. When I saw it, it is just the wrongest yeah. um, reaction to that kind of uh, problem mm. that you're trying to fix. So if there's a gridlock, it is not removal of those gates. Then because let me tell you, we are, we, we are far from where we were. Mm. Where you just wake up in the middle of the night, there's a gun. I'm telling you. Like, yes. Like, like literally. Growing up, growing up, Christmas time, at night, you were always hearing gunshots. You were always here waking up in the morning to hear, oh, they robbed in this street, Absolutely. they robbed in that street. In a long time, a, a staff of ours then, when I was still with TVC, he came back with bruises all over his body. Armed robbers had invaded the house. Mm. Even while I was in the university, in Delta State University, I, we, because of the insecurity, right, the information that we gathered was every, every room had to have a burglary. So we, we, my mom and my dad installed the burglary inside. So mm. you lock the door, but there's a burglary outside. So do you know that even when the armed robbers came, they didn't even bother to touch our door? Because even those who work with information, mm. right, this is not a case of, um, oh, there's gridlock. Do you understand the problem that you're going to cause yeah. for these residents? A lot of us are paying through our noses, living in a, a gated estates. Yeah. Not because we choose to live in gated estates yeah. because we want to be big men and big women. No. It is because of the security that we're trying to ensure Absolutely. that at least we're safe. In, a, in an essay the other day, I saw a video on social media where the man's car was completely vandalized in yeah. Benin. Yeah. Vandalized. They took out the brain balls. They took out everything that was valuable in that Mercedes mm. Mm. Um, SUV. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And these are the things that, you know, yeah. some of these, uh, what's it called? This um, estate security measures that a lot of residents have put in place. Come together is to carbon. Put in place. Yeah. I think for me, I mean, I also understand how these gates can impede traffic because where we find that alternate, alternate routes are available. I mean, typically the idea is that when you try to, to direct traffic all through one route, you're always going to have gridlock. So these other streets are and are alternatives and meant to disperse the traffic and ease off. But you see, the thing is, these things are, like I said, they're a consequence. So you have to have engagement. Oh, you put, there's always a why. Why not crazy, right? Why is this gate here? How do we achieve the security that you want and also ensure that we don't cause gridlock? Then we have engagement. We have interactions. Perhaps, okay, you don't need a gate at every two streets. Maybe if we look at the, and just the setup one gate. and we create a b big barrier that says, okay, there are gates, maybe four gates in these streets and every street in between, there are no gates. Those are the kind of engagements that we should have. But when people have gone and done your job, then you now come from the place of authority where you have failed to do your job satisfactorily to protect the people and give them a sense of security. 
then you just wield the hammer of authority. So, I mean, it goes for every neighborhood, but of course. God help us. Mm. But I feel, I, I, I agree 100% with you. Some of the gates are unnecessary. Yeah. Like you see this, <laughs> every street. my office is located, every street. Once you put gates at the major, because yeah. we have a lot of people that take hard drugs and all of those mm. things around, right? Mm. So if you put gates at the major points, it is enough. Yeah. You know, instead of all those in, in betweens. It's, it's really just dialogue to understand Absolutely. what the security threat is and how best and to And how best it. to mitigate it. Absolutely. All right, so I am not oblivious to the expressed mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes unexpressed frustrations of my fellow citizens. I know for a fact that some of our compatriots, compatriots are even asking if this is how our administration wants to renew their hope. And this was uh, an excerpt from um, the president's speech that he gave this morning. So I woke up this morning quite late, but I had to go catch up on, on the speech mm. on social and on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. I'm quite, I, I, I'm, I'm, ex, not really, let me not say I'm excited. I am, mm. I'm looking for the word. I'm not excited, but I am, I, well, I appreciate, let me put mm. that word. I appreciate the fact that he pointed the real core issues that are happening, you know, that we need to really focus on in Nigeria. However, I, I, I don't understand how much of security, you know, when you say that you know there's been a lot of progress in security, on what metrics are we measuring some of these things, right? Which will just make me to keep quiet because we're going to go on a break now. <laughs> I will now discuss our topic for I'm today. Holding myself from yes, jumping. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back.